thank you so much for your time this morning. Now, less than 24 hours away from polls opening. How are you feeling about the race and how things will turn out tomorrow? You know, I'm energized. We've been crisscrossing the state, the lieutenant governor and, and myself and the attorney general and secretary of state getting the word out. It is time to vote. This is a high stakes election with a very stark difference in, in two candidates. Um, and so we were reminding people we've gotten the biggest investment in public education in Michigan history at a time where we need it more than ever. We're going to stay focused on hitting the top 10 literacy mark and working with anyone who actually wants to get things done. We're fixing the roads. We've landed record investment, advanced autos and semiconductors and life sciences. These are good paying jobs of the future. So we really are working to secure Michigan's economy and uplift people and give everyone a path. So the question is now, are we going to throw our foot on the accelerator with four more years of the work we've been, the groundwork we've been laying and take this to the next level? Or, or are we going to go backwards? I say, let's not make the mistake of going backwards. There's a place for everyone in this Michigan that Garland Gilcrest and I are, are hoping to earn four more years to ensure of it. Gotcha. And this morning, Governor, we've been reporting on the latest numbers from the Signal poll. Any concerns with seeing how that this race is, is now tightening a bit with those latest numbers? I don't even know what poll you're talking about, but I'll just say this. We've always expected this would be a close race. I am not surprised by any polling that says it's closed. We know this. This is Michigan. This is what happens. And that's why we're working so hard to make sure people know what we have gotten accomplished, where we want to take the state, and how dire and stark the vision is on the other side. My opponent um, is bankrolled by Betsy DeVos. She believes that she's going to take out half a billion dollars from public education. She's against economic development, which is how we landed these advanced mobility jobs and secured the future of the auto industry. She wants to take women's rights away, and she'll eviscerate voting rights. So there's a lot at stake in this election. I wanted to talk more about that if you wanted to specifically tell voters maybe undecided why Tudor Dixon, in your opinion, would be wrong for the state of Michigan. Well, this is a person who said the right to make your own decision about your body. Um, it should be taken away, even in the most extreme cases of rape or incest or the health of the woman. She, um, I think that that is incredibly extreme, whether or not it's a decision that the every one of us would make if we if we were in that situation or not. Most people recognize that it is a decision that is inherently personal and private and should be made by the woman, not the government. Uh, she wants to get rid of all of our economic development tools. This is how we secured the future of the auto industry. Michigan either wins this decade or run the risk of being left behind for a generation. That won't happen under my watch. We're going to continue to win, compete, and deliver for the people of this state. So I think that whether it's the economy, whether it's education of our kids, or it's just individual rights to elect our leaders and make our own decisions about our bodies, we have a very different views of, of what the future could look like. And um, I think that one, mine is one where every person is respected and protected under the law and has real opportunity for prosperity here. And Governor, you mentioned already just some of the stark differences and some of you all's uh, views. I know gun rights would be another uh, topic on that list. Any comment in terms of where you stand on that for undecided voters? Well, you know, I, I've got to tell you, the, the days of the Oxford shooting, and we're obviously coming up on a, a very grim um, one year after, uh, those are the hardest days. And consoling a parent who's lost their child is um, it's a gut-wrenching thing to try to do. And there's nothing that I can do other than to forge forward and try to get policies that'll keep our kids safe. So secure storage, background checks, red flag laws. I'm not talking about hunting. I'm talking about making sure that our kids and our communities are safer. My opponent has made light of gun violence, posting a picture of herself with a gun saying her type of gun control means using both hands. This is not a joking manner. I'm furious that in this country and only this country, kids, the number one killer of kids is guns. It's unacceptable. We can, there are proven policies that work. We can, and we must do something. All right, and lastly, Governor, I'm sure we're uh, running out of time here. So I just want you to speak to, again, those undecided voters, some of whom may be critical of your last four years. There's been talk of your decision with the COVID-19 pandemic in schools. We've had recent reports of 
um, school grades and those going down. So those who may be critical of those last four years, why should we have another four? Well, you know, obviously a global pandemic was uh, something that every one of us had to navigate. None of us was planning on, and, and we didn't know a whole lot about the virus, especially at the beginning. It killed a lot of Michiganers. I worked hard with our experts and made decisions and they were not easy. They weighed heavily on me, but lives were on the line and studies show we've saved thousands of lives. We've also gotten record investment into our public education system to help get our kids back on track. This is a moment where Michigan has come out of some real tough stuff and we've come out swinging. We are leading when it comes to economic development, uh, education funding, and now it's time to take it to the next level, not go backwards. And as your governor, I'm grateful to have been here for the last four years, as hard as they've been. I know that our future is bright and I'll continue to stay focused on making sure that our economy is strong and there's real opportunity for every person who calls this great state home. Governor, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Have a great day, Emily.